Here we will examine a model of the skin. The first layer is going to be referred to as the epidermis. Deep to the epidermis is the dermis. Deep to the dermis is going to be a layer of subcutaneous fat outlined here in yellow. This is referred to as the hypodermis. Now we have to realize that this model contains both specialized receptors concentrated within the dermis. It will also contain glands. This here is going to be a, a hair follicle that will extend through this epidermis. This epidermis has specific layers. So as Dr. Seekirk mentioned, this most superficial layer here, the epidermis, the epidermis is actually separated into five distinct layers. The most superficial layer here on the surface is known as the stratum corneum. Just deep to that, this yellow layer here represents the stratum lucidum. The third layer, this gray layer, represents the stratum granulosum. The fourth layer, the stratum spinosum. And the deepest layer, the stratum basale. Here we're going to examine some of the specialized touch receptors and sensory receptors located in the skin, specifically located in the dermis and the basal layer of the epidermis. So we're going to mention a few receptors that are located in this model and introduce a few that aren't located and visible on this model. The five major receptors here in the skin that we're going to introduce, two are superficial touch receptors known as the Meissner corpuscle and the Merkel complex. We're going to introduce two deeper touch receptors known as the Pacinian corpuscle and Ruffini ending, and we're going to introduce a receptor responsible for pain and temperature, the free nerve endings. Wonderful. So let's first look at, again, if this is superficial and as we move towards the deeper aspects of the body, we first have to examine the touch receptors that are located more superficially. If this is the epidermis and this is the dermis, the dermis is going to be divided into two layers. You have your reticular layer, which is more deep. You have your more superficial layer, uh, which is referred to as the papillary layer. Within the more superficial papillary layer, and also the deeper aspects, the uh, epidermis, we have the Mesnier and Merkel touch receptors. What's interesting about Mesnier versus Merkel Merkel to me sounds like an older name, so I refer to this as being a slow adapting and this Mesnier as being a fast adapting. And what exactly does that mean? Well, you have to think that this specialized receptor, if it's triggered by mechanical information, it's going to send and relay this afferent input into the central nervous system. This Mesnier touch receptor is going to be sensitive to immediate change a mechanical input has to be more so constant to trigger the Merkel disc sending afferent information back into the central nervous system. So superficial touch receptors, Mesnier and Merkel. Now because we are examining this side of the model, we'll also pay attention to these structures here. This is going to be a part of our cardiovascular system and red is going to be the arterial system and the more darker color, the blue-gray color, uh, that's going to be, of course, then uh, the venous return. Now, as we talk about this structure here, it's involved with the cardiovascular system because this receptor here is merely going to provide us a sweat output. So I call it a receptor, let's call it a gland. The gland itself is going to release water and when the arterial cardiovascular system brings blood that has heat within it when heat is then combined with the release of the sweat gland they combine so that heat is lost when the water that is exiting the sweat gland is also evaporating so this is important for when we consider exercise. We have to think during exercise, we produce heat, and the way in which we dissipate that heat, we are going to involve both the sweat gland, of course, the arterial uh, systems of our cardiovascular network. 
Now, as we pass it over back to Dr. Wilson, uh, let's discuss the Piscinian and Ruffini touch receptors. Perfect. So now we're discussing, <clears throat> again, this Piscinian corpuscle, and not pictured here on the model is going to be the Ruffini ending. And so both of those receptors are deeper down within the dermis, so they're deeper touch receptors. And the first one to identify here is the Piscinian corpuscle. So you're looking at it here and it's cross section, so you're seeing inside. And a Piscinian corpuscle always has a pretty distinct look of kind of a football shaped onion. And each of these layers of the onion is filled with a fluid. And so the Piscinian corpuscle, as Dr. Seekirk mentioned, is a fast adapting receptor along with the Meisner corpuscle. And again, what that means is that the fast adapting receptors are responsible for relaying afferent touch information as soon as you come into contact with something and as soon as you come out of contact with something. So they give you updates immediately upon touching or not touching things. So the Piscinian corpuscle again aids with touch information and it also aids us in feeling pressure sensations and vibration of the skin. And then not pictured here is the Ruffini ending. It is also located deeper in the dermis. It's responsible for relaying information about touch, pressure, and also proprioceptive information about skin stretch. So when the skin moves and stretches, the Ruffini endings relay that afferent input back into the nervous system. The Ruffini ending is a slow adapting receptor along with the Merkel complex. And as Dr. Seekirk mentioned, those are gonna be the more prolonged sensations. So those slow adapting receptors giving you constant updates while you're in contact with something and touching it. Now, the next receptor to identify is going to be the free nerve endings. You will see these throughout the body and throughout the layers of the skin. All of these open nerve endings, the free nerve endings are gonna be responsible for detecting thermal responses and pain responses. So free nerve endings relay afferent information from the body regarding pain and temperature. Next, one last sensory receptor I wanna direct your attention to here within the hair follicle, at the base of that hair follicle, deep within, is going to be the root hair plexus. And that's gonna be responsible for helping relay afferent information whenever these hair cells receive a mechanical stimulation. So mechanical information can of course stimulate this hair follicle. This hair follicle is going to be connected to this root hair plexus. When triggered, the root hair plexus is going to send afferent information back into the central nervous system. This afferent information is going to be in part due to mechanical touch, but we have to think, how can we increase our sensitivity to mechanical touch? Well, it's going to be through the function of this muscle here. This muscle is going to be responsible for standing our hair up. And so this muscle, the erector pilae, is going to stand the hair up. This is going to increase our sensitivity to mechanical information. And then from a historical perspective or evolutionary perspective, this can also, from a visual standpoint, maybe increase how large we appear. So contraction of this muscle is going to be function of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. This sympathetic division, or the upregulation of the sympathetic tone, is where we fight, where we flee, or maybe freeze. Now a part of this structure we also need to pay attention to is this here. This gland releases oil to coat both the hair follicle as well as the skin, allowing us to protect ourselves to a greater degree from the outside environment and our inner body. Thank you.